Hi, my name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And this is part 12 of a series that I'm making about parametric curves and the associated parametric equations. This is aimed at students from pre-calculus through multivariable calculus, as well as physics students. Most of the applications we're thinking about are going to be about motion. In this video, we're going to think about what I call the distance traveled and speed functions. As time goes by, you, you travel a certain distance up to that point in time, and there's a certain speed at every moment in time. If you're in your car, it would be what your speedometer shows you at every instant in time. Here's our situation. I'm going to go quickly here, so you might want to pause this, and then you can read it and think about it. Now I'm going to go down to looking at the functions that we used to model this motion. Here were the original functions. F gives you the first coordinate of the point as it moves, and G gives you the second coordinate. C of t combines F and G to give you a point-valued function, giving you the exact location at time t. You can see this is a completely linear function, and therefore will we'll, uh, model the motion of a, along a straight line at a constant speed. To allow myself flexibility to allow non-constant speeds, I introduced a function I called h of t, in this case t, h of t was t squared, and plugged h of t into the c function, also meaning you plug it into f and g, to get nonlinear motion in terms of the speed. However, it still is along the same straight line because the t squared can be eliminated. In general, if you have an h of t that can be anything, and you, plug, you create a new parameterization where you plug h of t into c and therefore into f and g, you also can eliminate the h of t to see that it parameterizes the same line. Starting at a different point, ending at a different point, different directions and speed, but it still is along the same line. For this video, our task is to do the following. For an arbitrary function h of t, well, it's not completely arbitrary. It's going to increase in value. So the outputs are going to go from 0 to 1 over the interval, the time interval from 0 to 1. t goes from 0 to 1 find the distance traveled function that I called dist of, dist of t and the speed function that I've called speed of t. I would encourage you to pause the video right now and try to figure these things out on your own. Again, the situation is based on this thing. Pause it if you want to look at that. Now I'm going to do it for you. The key thing is to make a nice picture of a nice right triangle, a convenient right triangle, and use the Pythagorean theorem to find at least dist of t that will help us find that. Manipulate is Mathematica's animation command. I've been typically calling the animation parameter b. It's going to be the, um, the right endpoint of the interval over which I'm plotting this. I'll start it out just barely bigger than 0 and go up to 1. Let's also put the h of t here. I'm going to start out with a simple h of t. h of t equals t. Um, I'm going to use graphics and line to make my triangle. I used that in a previous video. Go back and watch that if you need some more help with that. I'm going to make it a thick red line. In fact, again, line is going to be used to make more than one line. It's going to be used to make a triangle in this case. The starting point is going to be the starting point for the motion, 2, negative 1. The, the next point in the triangle is going to be where the person is. Where is the person? The person is at the point C of H of B. So, so far what I've got is going to plot that line segment. Let's add some options in here. Axes, true, and plot range. We'll go from negative 5 to 5 in both directions. All right, this should graph a moving line as we've plotted many times already actually. This is the motion of the person, that's the parametric curve. But now I want to make a triangle out of this, a right triangle. I'm going to first go down to this point here that's got the second coordinate of negative 1 and has a first coordinate equal to the first coordinate of the point at each moment in time. Think about that. That means you're going to get the point f of h of b comma negative 1. that is unclear, make sure you think about it. f is the function that gives the first coordinate. Then I want to go back, complete the triangle by going back to the starting point, 2, negative 1. OK, 
Okay, now we see the complete right triangle, a growing right triangle. Why did I do this? Think about it. This is a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem applies. If you know the lengths of these legs, you can figure out the length of the hypotenuse. Do that right now on your own. Pause the video. Do that on your own. I will do it now in the video. Dist of t by the Pythagorean theorem is going to be, this, be the square root of the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs. The length of the horizontal leg is going to be, well, the absolute value of f of h of t minus 2. But because I'm squaring it, I don't need to put absolute value signs in there. Same kind of thing with the vertical leg. Its length is going to be g of h of t minus the starting second coordinate, negative 1. I'm subtracting the starting first coordinate here of 2 and the starting second coordinate there of negative 1. I'm squaring these lengths. Of course, this quantity is really the same thing as g of h of t plus 1, so I can simplify it to that. That, for an arbitrary f, g, and h, is the distance traveled function, at least if I start at the point 2, negative 1. Um, f and g are not arbitrary, though they're something specific, so we can use these formulas at the top here to simplify this. First of all, I can plug h of t into f in place of t to get negative 3 h of t plus 2, but then when I subtract 2 down here, the 2's cancel, leaving me with negative 3 h of t, and that will be squared. When I plug in h into g, up here I get 4 times h of t minus 1, but because of the plus 1 here, the minus 1 and plus 1 cancel, leaving me with 4 h of t squared here. This will simplify to 25 h of t quantity squared. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of h of t squared, careful, in general, is the absolute value of h of t. However, because I'm assuming h is increasing from 0 to 1, I don't need the absolute value signs since h of t is assumed to be greater than or equal to 0 here. There we go, that's our distance traveled function. Let's plot it. First of all, we'll define it here. I'm going to put the h of t down here as well. Okay, so I want to make changes there. The distance traveled function is going to be, in this situation, 5 times h of t. Let's plot it. Over the interval from 0 to 1. And let's make our plot range go 0 to 5 in both directions. This is the distance traveled function. It's linear in this case. Well, that makes sense because h of t is the simple one, just a t, and therefore the distance traveled function will be linear. It's You're going to be moving at a constant speed. What is that speed? We figured it out before. It's 5. That's how far you went in one second of time, 5 meters per second. That's the same as the slope of this line. Okay. In general, what do you do for a general t squared, or general function for h of t like t squared? What are you going to get? You're going to get, in general, a nonlinear distance traveled function. If h of t is t squared, this distance traveled function looks like a parabola, part of a parabola. You're starting out slow because the slope down here is very low, but then you end up going faster and faster because the slope gets greater. In calculus, the speed is found by taking what's called the derivative of the distance traveled function. In calculus and in Mathematica, you can calculate that derivative by putting a prime here. Again, my, my, my focus is not on rigorously defining the derivative. As it stands for us right now, this is just an operation. It's an operation that in this kind of setting is going to give us the speed. It's going to give us a function that starts out low in value and increases to higher values, just like the function dist of t itself does here. But it will be a different function. What function will it be? Let's put it in here, speed of t, and let's color these things, plot style. I'll make the distance traveled function blue and make the derivative function, the speed, red. So the derivative 
the speed, gives you the speed at every moment in time in meters per second. Starts out slow at zero, in fact, at, at time zero, it's technically zero, and ends up going pretty fast, and we need to go even higher if we're gonna see how high this goes here. Let's go up to 15 in both directions. Okay, the speed at the very end is 10 meters per second. What's the average speed? The average speed is five meters per second, which should make sense. That's the midpoint of this line segment is up at five. I'll end the video there. We'll get more into the calculus ideas in the next video.